Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant and you watching us live oh, hello. over on Twitch. Mm -hmm. How's it going, Joel? You got interviewed again. Uh, you were at scale, right? a bunch of people were running around doing interviews, right? <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And in fact, I had two there, but this one uh, uh, finally got released. So it was, uh, I had a really fun interview with the Google Kubernetes podcast. Oh, there it is, Ben. <laughs> yeah. So that was, it was really, really cool. So I got to talk about my history at the Southern California Linux Expo and the importance of the Linux chicks of Los Angeles. I got to talk about LWW and my other podcasts I do. And so that was really, really fun. It, 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 they had really good questions. And I like, if you go back and listen to it, I like how they organized all the people they interviewed. So that was really, really, it's really a fun listen. Good times. <laughs> uh, where can we find the Kubernetes podcast.com? Yeah, exactly. Episode 199. 199, scale mm. 20x. Yeah, I just realized I've got to get all the uh, LED lights on, me living in my perpetual darkness. Oh, yeah, I was just, <laughs> that's so funny, Ben, because earlier I was realizing, boy, Ben looks dark today. I thought it was my vision because my vision hasn't been the greatest the last few days. <laughs> I mean. So you were dark. <laughs> what, Darker what? than usual. Welcome to my resting state. Well, I did remember to cut the background on this monitor to uh, like not quite bright white, but a shade of because it's, we have hey, like forty three inch monitors, so they nice. work as a really good. <laughs> yeah, I didn't flip on all that. Oh well, I'll, I guess I'll just be emo <laughs> today for the audio yeah. listeners. I'm slightly darker than normal. Yes, you are. <laughs> no red. <laughs> no red. No blue. No no yeah. no green. No RGBs. So what have we been up to? I've been working on a. Um, I did a thing for patrons, and you know, I opened it up for everybody, but it was only on the uh, our Patreon page for people who want to learn about getting the Digital Audio Workstation Reaper set up on their Linux machines because it's a popular mm -hmm. DAW. And like, I'd like to move to Linux, but I, I don't see it because there's it's there's no EXE. And you think when you're coming from Windows or you're coming from a Macintosh, you're looking for something like that. And like, how do I get this set up? And there's it's one of those things where you have to hit the command line, and that's a big step. From for somebody coming from Windows, and I saw that question pop up again last week in the Reaper forums in the Linux section of a guy asking like, "Hey, help me, please! Anybody, can we just get that intro thing?" And I'm like, "Let me rework this guide and just make a public one and put it out on YouTube for everybody to watch." So I've been working on that, and I think I'm gonna do a couple of little things just to get everybody up to speed on that. Also, I was kind of excited uh, in the audio world because. I got a bunch of FireWire any audio interfaces, and uh, TAC finally released version 1.0 of Sound FireWire Control, which is the, for the ALSA drivers, it gives you like ALSA mixer controls for all your sound mm -hmm. devices and fire. Well, yeah, so like you, if you're familiar, you open up ALSA mixer, and like if you got like a focus, right, you know, Sapphire or something like that, you got like one or two, but a lot of these FireWire interfaces will have things like um, compression, EQ, and all that. All that shows up now. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> it's really neat. And uh, maybe I'll do something with that video-wise, educational-wise, later on. And uh, thanks, everybody, who showed up on Sunday. It's always interesting. I do, I edit Linux Seamcast Weekly on Sundays. It's just an AMA stream. If you want to pop in, swing by, talk some smack. Uh, my favorite thing is people who show up to offer advice. Love it. That's awesome. I'm so happy because when I go back and and look at the uh, chat, I see how how much how much you've had in how many people you've had in there and how busy it's been. It's awesome. Well, it's <laughs> not meant for. It's not an entertainment stream. Let's be very clear about that. And um, it's just a good way for people to stop by and go. Wait a minute, you're doing this on Linux. I'm like, yeah, yeah, put all this stuff in Linux and then you cruise on. It's not, uh, I'm not sitting there going, hey guys, this is how you do this. No, what's going on? Like, up. I'm just talking smack. Like, you got a question? We'll answer it. But it's the boring, non exciting things, the stuff that you got to do to make a podcast a podcast. So yeah. you might learn something. Well, I think it's cool that you're streaming that live. You, you just, you know, spending those hours uh, video editing and uh, people learn in the process. It's awesome. It is uh, interesting. 
I enjoy mm-hmm. doing it. I enjoy doing it. I don't enjoy fate setting up against me each and every Sunday, though. Oh, it finds un- yeah. <laughs> unique ways every week. I'm like, Let, let's uh, make sure you're about 30 minutes late on that. So I'm like, fine. I keep pushing the schedule back. And I can't push it back too far because I got to get the show out. Mm-hmm. Good times. I enjoy it. Come check it out. It's on Twitch. It's on our schedule with everything else. But when I'm doing these streams, I'm using this guy, DaVinci Resolve, and there's a new beta out. 18.5 has been released, and man, it's pretty neat. The big thing in this one, this is the nonlinear video editor that I use on Linux, and I even did a guide for getting this thing set up on AMD, and wow, it's an adventure. Mm -hmm. Be honest Mm -hmm. with you, it's a better love story if you just stick with NVIDIA, and I've been using DaVinci Resolve to edit the shows for years and years and years. This latest beta. It's got, the big one is trans, transcriptions and subtitles. And what really threw me is this is not done in the cloud. This is all powered by the DaVinci Resolve neural engine. Like what? Even so far as like, I, I disconnected the ether noodles. I'm like, are you really doing this locally? And it's doing a good job of it. This is going to be handy for two things. One, I, yeah, it didn't even cross my mind until I watched somebody explaining a use for it. If you said something in a video, like, oh yeah, remember when we were talking about that and you got a bunch of B-roll to go through, you can search through what you talked for. You're like, hey, find this area in the video (laughs) that I was talking about this, or we were talking about whatever, and it'll just jump right to that time code. Like, yeah, just go right here. The other one, subtitles. They can generate subtitles. You can bake that directly into the video. You can embed them. You can export them separately, however you want to do it. And a couple of things in the audio side, they finally got the voice isolation in studio working for Linux. So mm-hmm. if you get a bunch of background noise or anything going on, it can isolate your voice. And something people want, I haven't had a chance to play with it, is the dialogue editor and leveler. Mm-hmm. So it'll adjust your volumes to a target point. I got to get back to people on that to tell you how well that works. And uh, here's a fun one. Here's a silly one. That sounds real <laughs> silly. You can export GIFs. Or GIFs. 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 <laughs> GIFs. Go to the zoo and look at the giraffes. Um, <laughs> here's the thing. I, for, there was some silly reason I needed to export a GIF. And I was like, man, how do I, can I do this in Resolve? I was like, no, we're a professional video editor. You can't do that. I'm like, but I need to do, now you can. So um, if you ever need that to edit, because, you know, it'll break it out in like little keyframes and you just do, 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 do that and boom, make a GIF. Happy to yeah, see that. Very nice. It supports GIF 89A, finally. <laughs> Another thing, I was excited because I misread it when I was reading that. It was because it was like 3 o'clock in the morning. And I won, Brain. You hear me, Brain? I won. I went to bed. I didn't immediately get up and go play with it. Um, I got up the next morning and played with it. It's got support for AC3 audio, which I misread as AAC audio. AC3 audio is the Dol- oh, Dolby Atmos yeah. multi-channel stuff. Yeah. It's got support for that on Linux now. Still doesn't have support for AAC audio, which is a common thing for like cameras and things, you know, consumer cameras, I should say. Yeah, consumer, yeah. Um, That is a very common complaint. People's like, that's a showstopper. I can't use it because I'm like, (laughs) dude, if that's a showstopper, you shouldn't be messing around with a professional video editor. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Still no support for VSTs, audio plugins that I'd like to make use of. We're using them right now in Reaper. That doesn't work under DaVinci Resolve just from they don't care or incompetence or it's just not in their, they don't know how to get it set up. I don't know why. I would love that. And here's something I was wondering, because DaVinci Resolve has been based on this archaic version of Red Hat. 7.3. That's old. Yeah. (laughs) It's so old. old. Yeah. It's going end of life. I'm like, well, what are they going to do? And I kind of had my little fingers crossed. I was like, man, wouldn't it be really cool if they came and like, just moved it to Debian because I'm selfish? and like, that'd make my life easier. They decided to base the next version on something we've talked about, Rocky Linux. Yeah. So version 8.6 is what the new ISO is going to be based on, which, all right, that's pretty cool. And uh, I just think that's a real big upgrade from 7.3. and. <laughs> You know, I, it's, I still think it's amazing that we have such a, like we have just a professional video editor, almost fully featured, 
on Linux and it runs as well as it does. Like it, if you've been around using Linux for the past 30 years, this is a big accomplishment. Joel. Yeah, this is, this is huge. I need to upgrade to this new version of uh, Resolve, especially when the stable version comes out, because I've been on Resolve 16 for years. And part of that is because, you know, I still have an old, uh, you know, CentOS box with uh, DaVinci on it. And but there's one of the features that I was really um, excited about was the ability to export timeline markers as MKV chapters. And this will really help um, on uh, YouTube. I, I know someone I work with that that's helped uh, him with his uh, YouTube uh, chapters. And uh, it's just, that's a really nice feature uh, that some of the other uh, um, nonlinear video editors do have. So it's, it's nice that DaVinci has it now. It's a really, really solid piece of um hardware and if you're using it you know even uh, as a hobby type thing mm -hmm. no matter what your thoughts are about it here's something i bring up every time i do a four or five hour long stream on sundays and i have hundreds of gigabytes of video and audio loaded into it while i'm working you ever seen a crash mm -hmm. nope <laughs> Very I mean, stable, yeah. <laughs> I got never, 20 never or 30 crashed. hours. Yeah, it's, it's like that, that's something that I never think about it crashing, which is such an unfortunate thing when you're dealing with KD and Live or Open Shot. Mm -hmm. You're waiting for them Constantly to crash. Constantly saving. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I was explaining that. Uh, somebody is asking, like, why do you keep saving? I'm like reflexes, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm always hitting uh, Control S anytime. You know, at least every three or four minutes, even though I have DaVinci Resolve set to auto save, but I'm like, nope. Mm -mm. Yeah, I've been burned too many it. times, right? Hey, it's it's more stable than Adobe Premiere is right now. Adobe Premiere has been having a lot of issues. <laughs> I wouldn't. It, I would have thought by now at least Adobe would have something on Linux. You know? Yeah. You know, I they, know. I know. It's just it's it's a travesty, especially because the likes of. Uh, you know, DaVinci Resolve are really taking their market in the professional world and in the animation world. I mean, black magic design is industry standard now. So, <laughs> all their software. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, the software stuff, DaVinci Resolve's made big leaps and bounds. And yeah. Like, <sighs> but I know a lot of studios that are using DaVinci now because of, because of their color correction integration and because of the, the fusion, which is like Adobe After Effects. And it's all, you know, part of the kit, and you just play one one pot, one low price, and you're done. You don't have to have to do a monthly subscription. Well, that's one of the reasons Resolve has made as much headroom is yeah, you can buy a license for it. You know, yeah, They're, they've not went for software as a service. You know, and like that that's refreshing to see. You know, something you you can just own. I'm like, yeah, it's my mm -hmm. piece of software, and it's a f so far it's been perpetual upgrades for free. Yeah. You know, I bought a copy of Resolve at like version 14, and here we are at 18.5. And oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you just keep upgrading it and not that expensive. But let's talk about the Fedora 38, yeah. or as you wrote, Fedor 38 Pedro edition. Yes. This is <laughs> thank you, Pedro, for putting this in our uh, show su suggestions. So, yeah, that that's was Pedro's term for it is Fedorf, but I'm going to call it Fedora 38. <laughs> so, and it's really awesome because it's a week ahead of, ske of schedule. And yes, Fedora Linux 38 has been released. And there, there is a new Fedora budgie spin to enjoy the budgie desktop and a new Sway spin to use the Sway window manager that uses Wayland. And, you know, it's the drop-in replacement for the i3 window manager. But there's other, uh, other spins as well. There's KDE, there's Cinnamon, uh, there's um, XFCE, there's even... Um, the um, only correct one. <laughs> Compass Mate. And yeah, you know, almost every user interface you would like to use is they've made a spin of. Um, and of course, there's i3M. And, uh, oh, oh, it's, uh, I'm sorry, it's, what is it? It's, it's the, the mate one is the, the Compiz Mate. I think I said that one, but that one I have installed on one of my machines. <laughs> so, 
So that's really awesome. We have some new spins. And uh, the Fedora workstation, you know, features the latest GNOME 44 release, which includes a lot of great improvements to GNOME, including a new lock screen, a background app section on the quick menu in the, the top right, and improvements to the accessibility settings, which is always very important to me. And uh, yeah, so if you try out the default uh, Fedora 38, you'll be trying out the GNOME. 44 edition, unless you try out one of the spins. And uh, another awesome thing is they enable third party repositories, um, enabled an unfiltered view of applications on Flat Flathub, and this includes ones that are proprietary. Awesome. So it's, it's really nice to, <laughs> to have a software center that also has some proprietary apps in it as well. I, I wonder if it for. had anything to do with that guy who spent like two hours ranting about it on a live stream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> absolutely, Ben. So, um, gosh, you can actually go download the latest Fedora 38 ISOs now and enjoy the new look of the website. Yes, it looks much better. And I think it's easier to find the links to download and, and all the things. It's just a much more nice modern look and easy, easy to navigate. And um, if you want to want to um, update from an existing system, make sure to fully update your existing system before doing the upgrade which is what I did. I upgraded to Fedora 38 on my uh, Fedora 37 box and it went smooth as usual. And as with previous releases, I actually really love the new wallpaper for Fedora 38. This one is one of my all time favorites because the, the default wallpaper is really beautiful. It has white puffy clouds in a soft blue sky overlooking a beautiful green landscape. And it's, really nice i haven't truly I've, a kaleidoscope <laughs> of nightmares yeah i haven't i have used it for maybe an hour i did my show notes uh, some of my show notes uh, using fedora 38 so that was that was really fun and if you use uh, the default fedora 38 uh the gnome 44 experience is one of the best on fedora because it's vanilla and there's no changes to the the default user interface so just really, really nice uh, release, and it's stable and clean as all the Fedora re releases have been in the last few years. A couple of things, though. Like, I, I like the idea that they've uh, did some updates for the IBM Z series hardware. They've updated oh, yeah. Z13, because yeah. I like the idea in the back of my head of um, Z series IBM hardware running Fedora. I'm like, that's mm -hmm. brave. It's so cool. <laughs> I like that. A couple of things. Uh, it does ship with Linux kernel 6.2. So that's going to have full support for Intel Arc out of the box, which is really neat. Mm -hmm. The new updated NVIDIA Nuevo, Nuevo drivers. Nuvo, yeah. And uh, support for the Sony PlayStation controllers, officially built into the kernel. Yes. Also neat. Yes. Thank you, Sony, strangely enough. Provided by Sony. And um, all in all, yeah, it's another solid release from the Fedora team. Oh, it is. Oh, they even upgraded the the uh, one laptop per child uh, sugar interface. And okay. that's cool because I have several of the one lap per, per child devices and that'll be, be nice to upgrade them. <laughs> the It's kind of strange when we think about it because Fedora used to be like, um, what's a good way to put this? It used to be arch, but more dangerous. Mm, it, yeah. It was the could break yeah. any moment it was not the bleeding everything edge. Worked. yes it was, you, just, <laughs> you know you had to really know what you're doing like yeah. you, you had to work with and fight with it i used to always recommend it for that and you know you had to be a little brave to run fedora now it's interesting to see how fedora sounds like no we're just cool distribution no just install it yeah everything works it's plug and play not like the fedora old fedora core years <laughs> just make sure you install the xfc version you be good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, what else? Oh, right. Uh, mm -hmm. I took a look, Arthur, and put the uh, one of the things I'm also interested in speaking about Fedora is the Universal Blue project. I was oh, about, yeah, yeah. You know, being able to turn it sounds weird, like 
is turning like your PC into a Chromebook, your desktop into a Chromebook OS. We have with like backups and stuff like that. I'm gonna have to read into it a bit more. And mm -hmm. me too. I, I want to see like what's the difference between that and just like regular silver blue that comes in a bunch of different spins. Again, give me two more days in the week reality and i'll do yeah. a live stream yeah, and we'll, we'll install we'll it and play it right install it and yeah i think because this one's more consumer based as opposed to enterprise i don't know i mm -hmm. I, I tried to read through it uh, a couple of times uh, there'll be a link in the show notes to the universal blue project if you want to check it out and yeah good work on that so we got a blast from the past how, how long has it been since you've seen that logo i know it's amazing i love seeing that uh, sailing ship <laughs> that's a like what yeah that's right solus is alive maybe <laughs> this comes from joshua strobel um yeah. a post on the get sold out us blog first one in a while man um you might not know like if you just walk in at linux and like get solus and like, yeah solus was the hot new thing a couple of years ago unfortunately i think the last yeah, release was absolutely. like sometime it was around like 2021 that's been a minute and um Reading through this, you know, this is all about charting a new course. Like development during 2023 has just been non-existent. Like DistroWatch has even marked Solus as dormant. And like I went looking in the subreddit, and the subreddit is uh, up until very up until this post was just people going like, where, where, "What happened? What's going on?" So yeah. I'm glad to read this. I'm glad to see this because you know, short story long on this in the January Solus infrastructure. This is what happened. Like the infrastructure suffered a hardware level issue that caused a service outage. Basically, the system was not Raptor bus proof. So, if the person in charge of the singular point of failure gets hit by a bus being driven by a Raptor, things go down. That seems to be what happened reading through that. And uh, Ike, who started Solus, you know, he kind of pieced mm -hmm. out the project. He stepped in and he's offered them support for infrastructure. And they're like, all right. Yay. We're going to work with that, and they're going to rebase Solus on Ike's latest project, Serpent OS. No, I think that's really cool that they're going to let them, you know, share their servers and share the infrastructure. It's really awesome. I think it's uh, good that they got together with that, and yeah. you know, they're going to wrap things up. Uh, this is their plans for the future right now. You know, telling you what they got planned, what's going to be going on in the future, and Solus Five. I wish them the best. I wish them the yeah. best. We'll see if they manage to execute on the plans. That's the hard part. Mm -hmm. And you know, I we all we all like a good comeback story, right? Oh, we do. And this was one of the most you know progressive distros out there when it came out because uh, they you know it was a scratch built distro, and um, they got all the the gaming mechanics to work on the back end for installing Steam and. It, it was really amazing. It was it was kind of neat to use a Linux from scratch distro where a lot of advanced features worked. <laughs> People really liked it. And I, I've been fortunate enough never to really have that happen in my life. But I can imagine, you know, try to empathize with like, you know, especially if you get behind a new thing and, it, and everything's going right. And then all of a sudden it just gets abandoned. You're like, what? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. that's got to be a dark feeling, right? Yeah, poor uh, Ike. I'm sure yeah. there's uh, plenty of like Mandrake users mm -hmm. out there going, yeah, right? Uh, <laughs> I'm, and probably like three people that use Corel Linux, but. Yeah. <laughs> fortunately, like, you got to think like a popular Linux distributions. There's not a massive graveyard of like abandoned ones, right? Yeah. Everything's kind of like Solus, even Solus, when we talk about Solus, Solus has been around a while now. Uh, yeah, it has. Yeah, I mean, it to has. us, like in the grand scheme of things, it's like this new kid, but no, it's been around. Mm -hmm. Fedora is considered, you know, mainstream old hat type stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I guess people still use Mint. Mint's just there. Arch has been around forever now. I wonder what the new thing's going to be. It's got to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. There's going to be the new distribution. Maybe There's... it'll be Serpent OS. <laughs> Ike's new uh, distro. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. It, it, there, there's got to be something. I'm sure there's going to be that shift eventually to like all containerization on the desktop. And I'm like, fine, I'm out. Yeah. Immutable systems are popular now. Then I just go with over to the... BSD. <laughs> well, with the success of the Steam Deck. 
no wonder why, you know, it's, <laughs> it works really well. <laughs> for a gaming device, yeah. Yeah, but it's also good for desktop and productivity. No, it's I've not. Been, I've been having fun. I do a lot of my LWW show notes on my Steam. I can run a browser on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, but I, I use it for gaming and a lot of things. I was uh, playing around in OBS with it, too. It works pretty good. <laughs> yeah, if you're using OBS with uh, Wayland, I know exactly how it works. And it launches. Oh, it works better than that now, Ben. I even got a virtual camera working on it. <laughs> that took some doing, though. <laughs> yeah. Wayland and OBS is... Uh, let me give everybody a pro tip. Don't do it. Don't use it. It's not yet ready for production, and I know that because I deal with the questions. Yeah, yeah. Well, when you when you actually uh, set up like your Linux window captures and screen captures, they have an option for using the the X session. Well, you're using the flatback version of it anyway. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's all integrated and everything's working. So, <laughs> Solus, we wish you the best, and it'll be interesting to see. Mm-hmm. I Yay. more the merrier the way I look at it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, hipsters, we got something for you too. Yeah, so this is dpaint.js. It's a web-based image editor modeled after the legendary Deluxe Paint. And but it has a focus on retro image file formats, but it works with all your you know, most of your common file formats you can uh, bring in. And it is really a fully featured image editor and it supports PNG image, Amiga if, and Amiga icon formats, and its own dpaint.json file format, which is, I was really impressed with, the, with that because it supports, you know, layers, transparency, masking. And they said adobe.psd support is coming soon. But their own file format supports uh, most of the features that the Adobe PSD does. So it's no problem there. <laughs> oh, there's Vin. Vin. Uh, Vin. <laughs> Sorry about that, Vin. <laughs> there's Vin trying to draw something while live streaming. Uh, that's always difficult. <laughs> so it is written in 100% uh, plain JavaScript and has no dependencies. And I honestly, I was really also impressed with how fast and flexible uh, it is. Like I said earlier, um, you know, it supports layers and masking and other effects and filters. And it kind of lives in uh, the world between the more advanced web-based PhotoP image editor that is, is an alternative to Photoshop and other simpler web-based drawing programs. So it's kind of in the middle. It has a little bit more advanced features than some of the simpler ones, and but not quite as advanced as PhotoP. But it is, you know, it's just so easy to use. Oh, oh, and the big, big piece of news here that I was so happy about was you don't have to create an account to use it. Oh, there's so many of these web-based uh, painting programs that you have to create a web-based account. No, this one, you just, you just do file save, save the file. It saves it to your hard drive. And then you just import it <laughs> or cut and paste it from another um, application. So it's that simple. And, um, and Foxdog in chat is one, uh, the person who brought this to our attention. Thank you, Foxy. This is an awesome utility that I'm going to be using a lot now. I'm not. <laughs> You're not. <laughs> I'm not going to pretend I'm I mean, it's neat to go play with. You know, like, oh, it's neat. I can do that again. Yeah. Well, it is cool that it, it supports all the Amiga formats too, which is nice. That's well, done in JavaScript too. And you can also yeah. um, build a, like a little local copy too. So you don't have to yeah. use it completely the web based. There's versions, there's instructions for doing that on the GitHub. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a fun project. And for all I know, like the Amiga, if, and I knew Strider was talking about it earlier this week, I think. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't mess around. Like I'm devoid of nostalgia, so don't listen to me. Oh, yeah. Well, I used to use ifs a lot way back. Oh, gosh. In the early days of animation, sometimes they wanted ifs. It was mostly targas, but occasionally they wanted ifs. So if this, then that. No, <laughs> no, just IFF. <laughs> and in 2023, I'm not a hipster either. So I don't have any like, I'm like, oh, man, I want to play. Uh, maybe making pixel art, but I mean, there's other tools. 
nothing against the project at all. I'm just saying for me personally, I don't yeah. write in and be like, no, this is awesome. And tell me why it's awesome. And I'll be like, oh, cool. I didn't even think about that. It is awesome. That's a cool project. Yeah. I'm just saying. Well, like, yeah. Think of it as, you know, there's so many people who love del- deluxe paint. And this like, is an open source alternative. There's like seven of you. <laughs> Maybe eight, nine if I'm being generous. <laughs> deluxe paint, man. Um, again, this comes back to me with the nostalgia. Like, remember deluxe paint? I'm like, yeah, it was horrible. <laughs> I like deluxe paint. <laughs> it was very limited for what I needed it for because, you know, I was doing professional animation. Do you, but do it was you there. remember Photoshop 1.0? Yeah, I do. It was yeah. horrible. Oh, yeah. Well, f- Photoshop, you know, was based on Aldous Photostyler. <laughs> Adobe didn't make Photoshop. <laughs> so. But but they improved some things, but other things didn't improve. <laughs> it was it still over. horrible. Yeah, it was. 1.0 was, and even 2, it was bad. Yeah. It's like, don't you want to get back and play with your Commodore 60? Corel like, paint no, was, it was far superior bad. <laughs> back then. <laughs> man, Corel didn't even get usable like version 5, man. <laughs> Corel, <laughs> jeez, I hate it. Uh, the, I, I worked at a company that had all of the licensed CDs, like yeah. hundreds of, mm-hmm. from all their clip art, man. I hated those oh, things. Yeah. <laughs> I hated those things. They were the bane of my existence um, because we didn't have the storage to have everything on drives, too. So you were constantly going through the Rolodex, those drives, trying to find clip arts for whoever. And man, rawr. Anyway, have fun with it. Go play with it. It'll be in the show notes. Yeah. <laughs> now, instead of doing the Raspberry Pi segment, we got a couple of emails that uh, it was like, hey, we get questions. Usually they're just like simple questions like, hey, I want to get back to you. But we get some good ones every now and then. You can use our contact form to get in touch. We're going to get to that in just a second, right after mm-hmm. some shameless self promotion. That's right. Patreon.com yeah. forward slash Linux Gamecast. If you, we got a little one, you want to go check it out, support the show, uh, LinuxGamecast.com. We got a bunch of ways. We got our merch. We got PayPal. We got studio wish list. Jill's got a wish list. Jordan has one. Pedro's got one. We even take some of that magic internet money and try to convert it into educational content and sometimes just entertainment the way we like to do it. So we thank each and every one of you who support us or just share the show or anything like that. That's awesome. Come hang out with us if you're a patron or a Twitch subscriber. Link that to our Discord. That's where we're hanging out. Yeah. Bro, mm-hmm. we know about Matrix. It's cool. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we also have an IRC, which is linked to our live show, Discord chat, yeah. and our Twitch chat. So all these Twitch. communities can talk. That's what you're seeing in the bottom right there when you see our chatbot talking back and forwards, left and right, up and down. That's everybody from all the different services able to collaborate in real time. It is great. Now, I, I got a message. Uh, when, when you sign up, you become a patron, I get a little beep. And I was like, oh. There's a new patron. That's neat. Cool, man. And this was a name that I was like, never thought I'd yeah. see that day. Yeah. Eshep. Oh, Eshep. He's been one of our loyal viewers for a long time. And he's been on in Twitch chat. He's been on uh, Mastodon talking with us and has sent in uh, questions over the years. He's been a long time viewer. And now he's an officially a patron of ours yay and now he's in our discord he got it set up (laughs) he logs into discord first message like fine you win yeah you win it's time (laughs) uh i don't think he should he has been around since the irc days and yeah uh, catch up with him on mastodon and he's the one who picked up the uh sure i got in i'm sitting in right yeah that's right that is remember i was talking about the chair on sunday because uh (laughs) <laughs> it's horribly uncomfortable. Everyone who sits in this chair goes, what? And I'm like, I, I can only sit down for like 15, 20 minutes at a time. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't get comfortable in chairs. I don't care. I got this one because it only goes like halfway up my back, which I like because it's good to put my back. Thank you, mm-hmm. Eshep. He's a new executive producer with everything that entails, which is quite a lot. And that's a Whoa. pretty high tier. I got to be you, honest. Thank you, Eshep. Thank you so much. <laughs> now, um... Two emails. What are we on time? Okay, we got about five minutes to get through these. Uh, two quick emails then. <laughs> First one's from Livet, and he's talking about elder parts. Um, a listener, Simon, has asked the question, what is the oldest piece of hardware still in active use in your gaming computer in the correct show? Uh, all right, so Livet wants to know on this show, 
I would like to ask the same question in the correct show. Apparently, this is the correct show for Levin. And <laughs> now, there's always like the silly, I'm trying to win a contest answer to this, or there's yeah. the realistic, like, yeah, what do you normally do your show notes on? And I had to think about that. Yeah, me too. It's real simple for me. It's real simple for me because outside of the PCs in this room, which might seem strange to some of you, I use a tablet or multiple tablets, really, I guess I should say. That, yeah, that's how that's I live right. my life. Um, how about you, Joe? Yeah, so I actually still use my old Commodore 64, my Commodore 128, and uh, one of my 486s for gaming. And I actually, uh, what, uh, this is a computer I do uh, show notes on quite a bit, is an old uh, Pentium 4 computer I have, and it's running this card. <laughs> Me and Ven have shown off our voodoo cards before, <laughs> but mine's in my machine. But here, here is the box. It's but what, the 3D what, effects. Let, let's, um, let's try to simplify it. What is the oldest piece of hardware in the PC you're using right now? PC I'm using the oldest piece of our well, it just yep. got an upgrade. So hey, that, 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 <laughs> that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Like yeah, I said, so, there's the honest answer, and I'm trying to win a contest answer. Yes. But as far as the oldest gaming hardware I use regularly in one of my modern gaming rigs, I use a Super NES game controller with a USB dongle. And it works well. I use that for a lot of my games, a lot of my old retro games and and new games that are side scrollers and whatnot. <laughs> So I, I think it would be my NES game controller. <laughs> it, how do you use it, though? Because this says inside your computer. I know. I know. I know. Uh, my GPU is new. Uh, uh, mm, I guess the yeah. processor in this system is a couple years old now. So You got a CD-ROM drive or a hard drive? No, not on this. Not on my... Uh, um, my podcasting rig it's a little bit more modern than my other computers which i have over 600 so depending on that what computer that could be anywhere I'm between on. like 11 and 300 yeah <laughs> um, now i'm trying to think like in this pc right here cuz this is where i play my games um what would be the oldest thing in this thing yeah probably Hmm. Oh, I know. My case. There you go. <laughs> my my pink case. I've had it now for about eight years, <laughs> but it's had different uh, multiple systems in it <laughs> that I've upgraded. That would be, <laughs> uh, yeah. See, this that's where it gets squirrely, though. Is it like new in actual age or like new to you owning it? Yeah. yeah. Um, or older to you owning it. Uh, I'm going to say probably like manufacturing date. The oldest piece of hardware I have in this box right here is the Intensity Pro 4K. Ah, okay. Which is like <laughs> six or seven years old. And after that, it would be like the Threadripper because I this box is a first gen 1920X Threadripper. So I'm like, that thing came out like five years ago, right? Six yeah, years ago. Yeah, I guess that's true. That's about how old my processor that I have in here is. Yeah. Five years old. Yeah. Um, you know what's fast enough to run Track Mania? Which you should come mm -hmm. play with us on Tuesdays and Fridays. Get all the details at LinuxGameCast.com. <laughs> yeah. Um, up next. Okay. Synthetic you want me to... I'll, I'll oh, cut oh, through oh. this. Okay. <laughs> no, you're, you're going to have the answers for it. Okay. <laughs> now, you mentioned the Ruffle Project last week, so I looked into using it on my favorite Flash game, Desktop Power Defense. Turns out Congregate already has implemented it on their yeah. website, which is kind of neat. It starts right up in Firefox, which is good and plays just how I remember it. Not going to get a lot done this week as I invest my time into placing and upgrading gun towers. I mean, someone has to stop those circles and triangles from reaching the exit gates. Dun, dun, dun. Now, Jill, we talked about Ruffle mm -hmm. and how cool it was bringing back Flash, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Ruffle is the Adobe Flash player, player emulator written in Rust that we talked about several weeks ago on LWW368. And Seth Al, thanks for, for letting us know and actually reminding me about congregate.com. I still have my account on congregate from ages ago, and a few of my favorite games are on there, and they were Flash-based. And it turns out uh, two of the ones, uh, my favorite ones, uh, still work because of, of Ruffle. And it's really cool. And one of them is Sushi Cat 2. 
that I enjoyed uh, from 2011, and the other is a 3D Logic game from just just called 3D Logic from 2007. And uh, they they loaded and and on on their pages it actually tells you uh, that uh, Ruffle is is the Adobe Flash implementation uh, for for playing these games, but not everything may work correctly. But fortunately, on the two games I tried that I had in my library worked fine. I was so happy. <laughs> so this was really great, Ven, because now we have proof that Ruffle is working really well. <laughs> so that's that's just so cool. It's uh, really come a long way. It's yeah. really neat. Really fantastic to see. I could, you know, I want to go back to Newgrounds and dig out stuff and just see if it's there, if when and if I get the time. But we appreciate your feedback. And we will eventually get to it. If you want to leave some, head over to our contact form, fill it out, mm -hmm. make sure you select the right show, as it was said this week, LWDW. Send it in, and maybe we can do like a little email show, like maybe once a month. Yeah, cool. Once a month, and but I always do that, like form complete sentences mm -hmm. and come with like real questions or ideas or thoughts or things like that. Don't worry, like hey, I got a simple question. Talk, you know, like read yeah. what I wrote on the show. No. <laughs> So uh, we appreciate you watching. We got to bounce. We're running long. It's already 42 minutes. So, okay. ladies and gentlemen, let's cue the music and roll some credits. Aw, thanks again to our new executive producer, Ishef. Woohoo! And he went all out. That was awesome. <laughs> the only only tier higher is advisor, which almost are correct. Theron. And Omega says, oh, no, no, we have one that's higher than that. That's ah, right. It's the, that, yeah, it's, the yeah. one be, it's, it's the danger one. Hey, everybody. It's the danger one. <laughs> Super Death Throat, Empty, Blasphema, all of our sea monsters like DS and Joe Krylo, Fute. I saw Fute mm -hmm. in chat just a minute ago. Oil of Hope. Yeah, we got Spine, Justin, Piper, your PPC. Good luck. Scoots. My Steve husband is in there. My brother, Jelly Bean. Do, do, do. I got so many people in here. <laughs> Can't name them all. Thank you to all our wonderful uh, patrons. Everybody, we'll see you again next mm -hmm. week. Come catch us live if you can, or just pop in our Discord. That's where we're hanging yeah. out the other six days. And uh, buckle up. And this is always <laughs> a fun ride. Yeah. All right. Bye bye, everyone. <laughs>